Welcome back to New Rockstars. Miss Marvel's bangles were stolen off of a blue corpse. Could we, be, could we be looking at our first hints at Kamala's Cree heritage? Or should we send Gargamel a congratulations card for a job well done? Either way, there probably isn't going to be a third Avatar movie. But this is Rogue Theory, the show where we pitch the wildest theories for the nerdy titles that we love. My name is MT, and going rogue with me today is the future queen of the Cree Empire, and most likely to pull the fire alarm at your wedding, it's Jessica Clemens. What's going on, Jess? Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm just going to go with the fire alarm. Yeah, no, she'll pull it. She'll do finished. it. And once you know it, the captain of the clandestines, it's my boy, off-screen producer, Brandon. Ah, uh, yes. On, Brandon? Leader of the clandestines. Did you, Empty, did you insinuate that the blue body was an avatar? You think it was, you think it was Jake? Uh, yeah, I did either avatar, a smurf, um, some type of other blue, uh, maybe uh, one of the blue men group men. Um, I mean, if Disney if Disney brings Avatar into the MCU, I'll be impressed. Synergy, synergy. <laughs> you have a multiverse, multiverse. <laughs> brand synergy. The yep. multiverse the Pandora can bring verse. anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Pandora's box is just the MCU in general. Um, and the current Vice King of the Inhuman Empire, it's Tom Michelson. What's going on? Yes, um, I, unlike Blackbolt, I can talk, but I'll just talk very quietly. But yes, I am the vice king of the Inhumans. I just got to be very quiet because if I get loud, then people's ears hurt. But it's not from a sonic scream. They just don't like my voice. <laughs> 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 so perfect. Anyway, well, thanks, thanks for having voice, me, guys. Tom. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gang. So, knowing this new format where I pitch a theory and you guys tell me whether you're not, you think it's roguish or bogus, <laughs> or maybe you just, you know, whether or not you approve or not. I'm going to shoot you guys with a weird theory about Miss Marvel. You guys ready for this? Oh, yeah. Do it. Let's hear it. Okay. Yeah, ready for this? Now, guys, I'm not sure if you noticed, but that arm that Najma and Aisha came across was bluer than an Eiffel 65 music video from the year 1998. Now, isn't that suspicious? Well, I think that this could be proof that the Kree were involved with humanity for hundreds of years prior to Aisha and Najma finding the bangle, especially since we know that Kree blood doesn't have the right ingredients for evolution like human does, especially in the comics. And thus means that the Kree are incapable of becoming superpowered people like your Monicas, your Kamalas, or your Carols, a.k.a. Uh, Mona Kamala Danvers. <laughs> uh, that's my, Wait, my, my the Marvel's time. name. Say so one more time. Mana Kamala Danvers. It works. That's a better title than it the Marvels, works. actually. It, I like that. Right? That's, <laughs> that's better than yeah. the Marvel. Hashtag Mana Kamala Danvers. You know, hashtag Mon you're forcing people so to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> spell it wrong. That's why MT got fired. Yes. MT got fired from the marketing department. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> Makes complete sense. Now I, it all checks out now. MT loves MD. Mana Kamala Danvers. All right. Anyway. So what would be the Kree's next best solution? Oh. I don't know. How about an interdimensional bangle that unlocks the Kree potential to be a superpowered being? Because we know from the end of Captain Marvel that Ronan the Accuser and the Kree Empire were very interested in the human weapons of Earth. You know, you're like Captain Marvel. With Ronan himself vowing to come back for the weapon, meaning Carol Danvers. He's like, I'm going to come back for you because, man, you destroy all those ships really good. And I, whew, I, I didn't want some of that for the glory of the for the, uh, the Supreme Intelligence. Now, so what if the Kree learned that these super old cosmic bangles that came bundled with the 10 rings from a meteor that struck Wakanda of the, like millions of like thousands of years ago and wanted that bangle for themselves so that they can learn how to unlock their ability to do super powered shit? What do you guys think? So you think the bangle and the 10 rings were already made came in the in, same meteor they were inside them someone put them in the meteor so this was like a, a loot drop yes. in Fortnite or something right <laughs> this is like <laughs> you said it completely a right i don't know why you drop. said or something like that seems like you really play these games bro. i don't know is that what the kids are doing is that the minecraft is that minecraft <laughs> is this is this minecraft we're talking about <laughs> but like so do you think it was like a celestial like put some like super uh, some super, super OP devices inside of a meteor and just like chucked it into the solar system and was like, somebody come find it. I think it, that could very well be the case. Or maybe even... Because someone still has to make it, right? Yeah, or maybe even, um, this is just a wild idea, maybe he who remains, like tossed like a chunk of vibranium of shit. He's like, all right, 
here's some shit that's gonna cause some chaos. Like he, went through, first, he yes. went through one universe and he's like, oh, yeah. this next time I'm gonna put some extra some yeah. extra loot out there <laughs> for, this, extra, for this update. Extra shit in this one. Wait, so are you saying it's the same meteor with the vibranium? Like it came with vibranium, it came with bangles, it came with rings? Oh, uh, or is it a second one? You're saying it's the same one? I think that like there's one big event that killed the dinosaurs maybe. We know from Black Panther that um, Killmonger said that Wakanda was like in Africa in general was the center place of civilization. That's where everything popped off. So, like, I think that before, like, Pangea split apart, maybe this meteor caused Pangea to split apart and, like, spread off different um, artifacts to different parts of the world. Um, and so we get the vibranium in Wakanda, and then the Ten Rings gets picked up by Wenwu, and, um, you know, and then this uh, bangle gets lost in, was it Pakistan? Yeah, I mean, duh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What, it sound- what show am I watching? Uh, <laughs> there Tatooine, there's two bangles too, right? We know there's two bangles because they were like, where's the there's other two one? Bang- well, they were looking for the other one in the first one too. Uh, and when I say the first one, I meant like with the the grandmamas. The grandmamas were like, we don't know where the first one is. I don't want to put a hat on a hat, uh, especially on your theory, MT. But like, you made me think like the other time something struck the earth was when the celestial Tima was planted. Do you think maybe he left behind, you know what I mean? Like that, sh- that like magical stuff came with him and he just you know, was planted in the center of the earth. But like this other mystical energies or powers were left behind in these artifacts. I don't know. I never thought of that until you mentioned that. But I was like, damn. That, you know, that, that's a really good idea. Because you know they're trying to tie all this shit together. Like from Shang-Chi to this, you know, like, and I'm sure Eternals, phase all this phase four stuff. But they're really trying to tie it all in. So I hadn't thought of that. I would love if, like, this was just part of, like, celestial technology that was left behind from there um, when they were just here and just, like, just doing weird shit. Like, I feel like that makes a lot of sense considering that, you know, in this new phase, we got Eternals and we got, um, you know, just, like, they're they're sort of just, like, introducing the Celestials. Like, hey, we are the players. Like, we are going to fuck shit up very soon. And, like, we were, we have been involved in Earth's um, evolution. So, like, this could very well be um, celestial gear left behind from when they dropped that celestial seed into the middle of the planet. Um, so yeah, that just that makes a lot of sense. I like that. I'll tell you what I don't like about your theory first. <laughs> yes, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> this is what I don't like. <clears throat> I don't like the <laughs> idea that there's a meteor floating through space with just the, the right pieces of equipment that is needed for the humans on Earth 616. That is what I don't like. I don't like that it's like out of wouldn't you assume there'd be more meteors? Wouldn't you assume there'd be much more technology? Not just like the bangles and the ten rings, which I'm also already irritated about being like, okay, so we're saying the bangles and the ten rings made by the same people on the same meteor. But I'm gonna tell you what I like about your theory. I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you what I like about your this is like a chef cooking show. This is utter <laughs> shit. But I <laughs> love but I love I'm shit. an idiot sandwich. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're an idiot sandwich. But I fucking love sandwiches. They always do that. They're always like this is the worst thing I've ever had in my life. Yeah, yeah. But not more, please. today. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like yeah, more, but not they do stupid. Today. That's what I'm doing. So though I hate it, let me tell you what I like, what I also hate. Um, that there is that I do like though that it, it's basically um what are they called um when we find um not artifacts but when we find it in the rocks like pieces like old bones and stuff and then we archaeology well, that's the job what's the actual thing a fossil <laughs> a fossil thank you <laughs> got it so that's yeah. the job you guys I'm looking for the person that finds them so archaeologists. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, God damn it! Yeah, I've been saying it for, you know what I mean. So I like the idea of the equipment being fossilized on something, and it is just floating through space because that is what it would be because they're on a different planet. So I do. I'm like, I'm like, oh, it makes me mad that all these pieces of equipment would be on one meteor. But then I'm also like, but it could, but it could, and it, it my damn well could. After all, everything that's been happening, if just some pieces got left behind on something, even if it was a fossil, that fossil being the rock floating through space and finds itself on a random planet. Because then it's not just Earth 616. It could be, well, it would be 616, but it wouldn't just be Earth. It'd be other planets that also got that piece of equipment. We just haven't visited those planets yet. We're just looking at this one right here. So ultimately, 
would I make a deal with you? I will. <laughs> but it goes against it goes against my nature. <laughs> so I feel like I'm on short I'm yeah. 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 Just a short <laughs> take. <laughs> All right, sharks. <laughs> do I get my funding? Here's what I'm confused about, MT, with this whole like Cree thing, because I do think the Cree are involved somehow, and especially with like the blue skin. Which, how long was that dead body there for? Why was do I do Cree decompose? Like that's the other you thing. Think that's something yeah. to think about. Can but I ask also, you a question, I was wondering, Brandon? Hmm. Yeah. So. Are we just like ignoring that they called themselves the Jins? That's my next part, right? Is that like, well, they were saying like, this is what people have called us. They've called us Jin. They've called us, you know, whatever, whatever different names. They're not, and they're just taking that name for sake of the story, I think. Because I think they're hiding who they really are. Because the whole dimension thing is what's throwing me off. Like, why are these Kree from like another dimension? And not just like from outer space. Are these Cree that were like kicked out of the Cree world for their beliefs, their weird religious beliefs? I also think, you know, because uh, I think the way they're going to bring mutants into the MCU is like have them coming from another dimension or another universe and like they're refugees in a way. I'm wondering if they're, if Kamala is like a mutant and like they're going to make the X gene, mm. they're going to mix like in humans and mutants in a weird way where it's like, the X gene can get activated inside of people kind of like instead of doing like teragenesis and all that stuff. That's what Bruno said. He was coming in from inside of her. Yeah. 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 Like you have this everyone, like maybe every human has like an X gene or maybe just like descendants of mutants have this X gene uh, uh, and it can be like activated and like, they're not really gin or they're not uh, uh um, clandestines or whatever words that she was saying. She was just saying that to Kamala. Like, I'm, I don't, I don't trust anything this lady has to say, uh, but maybe they're like mutant refugees or something. And they're trying to find like a new home world, but they want to go back. I don't know. I'm really confused. How long has this Cree yeah, body been what, there? Yeah. Back to my <laughs> <point>. <laughs> No, when you brought that up, like uh, this made me think about like the possibility of like, what if the dimension that like Najma and all of them came from was an alternate universe where the humans are already established, the Agents of Shield universe, where we know that the Kree are have already popped shit like popped shit off. So like, what if they're just a group of inhumans that call themselves the clandestines because like they're in a different region of the world? So like, not everyone's gonna call themselves the same things in different regions of the world. So it's like, all right, we're from this from this Agents of Shield universe. The multiverse is broken because of he who remains, and like like wormholes are opening up and shit. What if like you know they got tossed through one of those wormholes as to be exiled? And like they're like, all right, we gotta get home, or else we're gonna cause a freaking incursion. Um, and like, that'd be really fun. And like the Kree are also from that other universe, and so they're like, all right, um, we have this bangle, and we should probably. I don't know. I'm just throwing over no, no, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, MT, like you're, what you're saying actually is kind of. Com- I actually, I'm kind of combining with a little bit of what I was thinking last night when I was hearing them talk about, yeah, they're, they're clandestine and you know, they're really evil. You know, now we know they're kind of evil and stuff, but. You know, and then so getting it back to your original theory about it being the Kree, yeah, I think it has. I think the Kree um, trying to find or create weapons, uh, you know, uh, using the using the special jewelry is spot on, makes sense. But for a second last night when I was watching, and they were talking about how come they don't age and how come they've been around, I was like, are these evil scrolls? Maybe. Like, because we know we're setting up for secret invasion and stuff that's coming right. out. And scrolls are going to have to be evil at some point for that to happen, I would imagine. <laughs> we need some evil right? scrolls. Fine. Okay, well, go on, Kevin Feige. <laughs> we need evil scrolls, right? So so maybe this was, maybe the, the crashing was like, <clears throat> um, like, I don't know if you guys watched Beast Wars. I totally did. But like, you know, that there were, there's a war of the Kree and the scrolls, kind of like the Maxis Burticons. And then they, they're fighting and they crash on Earth. Um, and that's where these artifacts are found. But so maybe these were so maybe this they, they're scrolls that killed the Kree and are trying to get their weapons and they can't use them. And now they're kind of stuck on Earth from this dimensions and stuff. So uh, I was just trying to think because now that we've firmly attached this to Shang Chi, and now that of course Captain Marvel we we're, we're, we're connected to the Kree, I'm like they're still planting seeds for what's coming down the the pike. And I was thinking, well, with the Secret Invasion coming soon, and with these guys being, you know. Uh, shifty characters i was like maybe maybe the scrolls have something to do with it so i was just trying to tie what i was thinking with what you said is essentially what's happening but <laughs> yeah i was like i never thought of that i really like that they could be like super scrolls right like they have 
abilities are stronger than regular scrolls. Yeah. Dude, I cannot wait to this see Super Scrolls in MC, bro. I cannot wait. This could be the turning point where we're all like, oh, there's scrolls. My cat just attacked the shit out of my hand. <laughs> oh my god, I ate her. Oh no. So, are you okay? I was gonna say yeah. you played it off very well. <laughs> Oh, did oh, I? I went, we, we had no idea. We had no idea other than my cat just spit the shit out of my hand. Like, I wouldn't have even known. That's I, acting. That's acting. That's acting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank um, you. So, I, I think it can go two ways, and I would be obviously clearly, you don't want to be in my hand. Stop. Um, I think it could be that watch them be, us be like their scrolls. Their scrolls are rubber, 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 their scrolls. But then they're actually going down the right of Eternals and being like cosmic, de- like gods because i'm like a piece of me is like when i when they were first like the djinn i was like oh the demon ghost if you play a lot of uh spooky uh video games you know what a djinn is so i was like oh it's a spooky ghost it's a demon and then when we i was like or maybe their version of this demon is just a scroll but then i was like or watch them just be going the route of eternals and celestials and we're just we think that they're gonna go the kree route but watch them be like godly beings Godly demons. God demons. But God demons. that's a bummer view. That's my bummer account. Mm. I'm gonna pick up my cat. <laughs> um, <laughs> if they if they are though, if they were Cree and they're or they're part Cree and they're like inhumans for lack of a, a better term, you know, the Cree don't like the inhumans, right? Because they because the supreme intelligence was like the inhumans are gonna destroy the Cree. That you gotta stop the experiments. So it would make sense that the Cree would like banish them to like another dimension and be like, you guys gotta go here. Like a Phantom Zone, maybe, yeah, like, like their own version of the MCU Phantom Zone. But it is strange that, like, they want to, like, Najma wants to get back to this other zone, but, like, why do you want to leave this realm so badly? She's like, we gotta get back with our people, but it didn't look chill when 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 Kamala kind of dripped into it. It didn't look very chill. Everyone looked kind of intense and angry and... <clears throat> glowing eyes i was like i don't know i want to live there and something something's got to blow up for them to go back to yeah so i mean who knows man that's it it seems pretty popping like to have glowing eyes it's it's pretty nice glowing eyes i don't even have (laughs) like my eyes are just like straight up black but also yeah light eyes sounds very stupid i don't want it i like to be when i'm in the dark i like to not be hidden or i like to be hidden i like to be in the shadows not caught I mean, especially since me and you fight crime every night um, oh, together, fight crime. obviously. I just like to hide um, and then jump out and scare people. <laughs> oh, yes. No, no, no. That's, that's, that's your role. Because, like, I, you're the distraction. I have you be the distraction that you hide. And they come to go for you at your hiding spot. Yeah. And then I get them. Yeah, I yes. get them in the back. And, and right in the back of my head. head. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then just this cat work. bites the um, shit out of him. Yeah. <laughs> the shit at the end in celebration uh-huh. <laughs> but no okay so let's say this is time for judgment now because I have now delivered my theory now what do you guys think overall do you think that this theory of the Kree wanting to use these these bangles for the to unlock their evolutionary biology before it gets stolen by Aisha and the gang do you think that's too rogue I'm starting off with Brandon rogue or Rogus or bogus, Brandon? No, I, I, I like this. I like this theory. I'll call it Rogus because, yeah, I think the Kree, they do, they're scared of these bangles because of what it unlocks. I think it's tracking with that inhuman kind of storyline. Like, they they want this evolutionary power back, uh, but the, the overall Kree are scared of it, and they want to destroy it. Full stop. Yeah. All right. One vote for the theory. What you think, Tom? I think I'm gonna give it two rogue thumbs up. Also, I, I like I I should have I should have like obviously they're planning Captain Marvel two and stuff, so the Kree are gonna be a big part of this. We're going into space as opposed to it being more like Shang Chi, maybe you know Talo related, and uh, so I, I really like that. I and and thought about how how uh, the Kree would want to use this new weapons technology, but then like evolving and becoming more powerful and. Um, yeah, it makes sense, and it tracks for what will probably be setting up for Captain Marvel two, and it tracks for what the world of the show is building. So, two rogue thumbs up. Oh, all right, thanks, Tom. Now, just saving the best for last, of course, Jessica Clemens. Do I? <laughs> what does the, <laughs> the final Shark member think? <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
I bet you're waiting. Don't want it. I bet you're waiting to see where it goes. <laughs> it's staying right there. Oh, I we get our first I'll middle do, thumb. I'll do slightly. I'm leaning more bogus. Or wait, rogus? I'm, I'm leaning rogus. more rogus. Yes. <laughs> but rogus. I think just a little bit of spice. Just a little bit of spice, and I'd be completely rogus. Don't think it's bogus. I think it's far from bogus, but I'm just not going to give it the full. It's like getting a, a B minus. It's like giving a B. It's minus. just ogus. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just ogus. And let me tell you, I need the bow. I need the B. I'm also allowed to be really stingy about my votes because I win rogue theory. I used to win rogue theory all the time, so I'm allowed to be stingy. I'm like the queen of this. <laughs> yes, bitch. I'm allowed to be. Here stingy. we go. No, Here we I, go. And there is a B yes. in bitch. So. I, I, I allow this. <laughs> there is a B. Like just just invented a new a new voting element for rogue theory. The middle thumb. <laughs> it's not- rogue is bogus or ogus. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna actually just implement that. Oh, that's kind of funny. All right, I'll take it. Two and a half thumbs up. Thanks, guys. <laughs> um, well, um, but up next we are going to talk about who is really leading the Department of Damage Control. But first, some capitalism. Head on over to NewRockstarsMerch.com to grab our Miss Marvel themed latest obsession shirt. Cosmic Daydream. This limited edition shirt will not be available for long. And when you purchase this shirt, you unlock the ability to get a custom shout out on Inside Marvel, our Miss Marvel after show. It's also your last chance to get our Obi-Wan Kenobi themed latest obsession shirt as well. So check out all of our awesome merch options over at NewRockStarsMerch.com. And we want to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this video. Guys, it's time to bring that summer heat into the bedroom for once in your gosh dang life. Confidence can take you far in life. It can also help in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate, if you know what I mean. That's where Blue Chew comes in before you do. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, bad, bad, bad empty. Bad, bad empty. <laughs> Back in two thumbs Sorry. up for me. No. Uh, <laughs> bad empty. <laughs> two rogue thumbs up yep. for me. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime day or night, so you can plan ahead or just be ready whenever the opportunity arises. Process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And the best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy, because that's the worst. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA, prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. It's time to get off the couch and back to work. If your tool needs an upgrade, head to BlueChew.com. So if you can benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code ROGUE at checkout. Just pay $5 of shipping. That's BlueChew.com promo code ROGUE to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. We thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. And also, we want to thank Stance, because since I got my Stance socks, I've made a solemn vow that they're the only socks that you will wear ever again. So you can imagine how excited that I am to hear that Stance is now expanding their scope to a full active apparel line. My emotions cannot handle this news. I'm so excited because they've got everything from shorts and sweats to hoodies and hats. And it's all so soft and colorful, people. And if you enjoy the comfort and creativity of Stance in the past, you're not going to believe what all Stance has in store for them now. Tommy recently gifted me Stance apparel, and I can't believe how incredibly soft it is. I thought Stance only made socks, but now they're making everything from joggers and sweats to hoodies and hats. And it's all really comfortable and super colorful, with versatile style that you can wear almost anywhere. It's not just socks anymore. Stance is bringing color, comfort, and creativity from toe to head with the launch of our all new active apparel line. That's right, what started off as a radical reinvention of your sock drawer is now expanding to your entire wardrobe. Check out Stance's super soft line of sweatpants and joggers, shirts, hoodies, hats, and more. Now available in a full range of fits, prints, fabrics, and fun. Embrace a life of superior comfort and creative expression with everyday active apparel that truly is stitch different. Stance's philosophy is that you should never have to sacrifice your individual style for the sake of comfort. And now you don't have to. So whether you're relaxing around the house, working out at the gym, or running all over the town, Stance now delivers its signature softness and creativity 
in a full line of active apparel styles from toe to head. Stance has got you covered. Head on over to stance.com and get 15% off your first purchase. Use promo code ROGUE at checkout to apply. Enjoy the color and comfort of a life less ordinary with Stance Stitched Different. From crunching at the pump to getting an eye-popping check at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting us all where it hurts. And boy, does it really hurt. That's why I started using Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With every purchase, I'm earning cash back thanks to Upside. To get started, download the free Upside app in the App Store or Google Play, use our promo code Rogue Theory. That's all one word, Rogue Theory, and get five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more. To use the app, all you got to do is claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. You then check in at the business when you're there, pay as usual with a credit or debit card, and then you get paid from Upside. I've downloaded this app. I've used it at a couple different gas stations. It works great, super easy. It's a great little rewards program that's better than most things that stores offer on their own. In comparison to credit card or rewards loyalty programs, you can earn up to three times more cash back with Upside. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week. A million dollars. That's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating in the App Store. All you got to do is download the free Upside app and use promo code Rogue Theory. That's one word, Rogue Theory, to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code, all one word, Rogue Theory, when you download the free Upside app. Do it today. It's a great app. It's super easy. Check it out. Thanks to Upside. Now that Brandon has done this amazing ad, I want to let Brandon do our second topic for the day. Yes. Brandon, take it away. Okay. I've got a very rogue theory for you guys. Okay. We've all seen how the DODC is really getting powered up. They got weapons. They got power to like bust into wherever they want. They're taking kids off the street, taking them to their little holding cells, right? The main guy we've met is Agent P. Cleary. We don't know his first name. All we know is he's Agent P. Cleary. He's been running the show ever since Spider-Man <laughs> No Way Home. Well, that's, this is what I'm getting at, MT. He is a little douchey, right? It seems like his partner, though, she's a little more aggro. He's trying to tamper her down a little bit. But who is this Agent P. Cleary? Where did he come from? Here's my rogue theory, okay? Agent P. Cleary is Nick Fury in disguise. OK, he's wearing one of those uh, he's wearing one of those Black Widow face mesh things. Whoa, whoa. I think I think that after we saw Nick Fury last <laughs> in Far From Home, when he was up on the space station, he's like, where are my shoes? Who stole my shoes? OK, uh, <laughs> where's my mask? He gets his shoes back and he's like, I got to go down to Earth. I got to clean all this stuff up. Right. He becomes Agent P. Cleary. And no one knows that it's it's Nick Fury, which he loves to do. He loves to sneak into places. Shield is gone, right? This is the new Shield. DODC is the new Shield. He's taking it over, and he—we know how much he loves. We know how much Nick Fury loves interrogating teenagers. He loves doing it. I think he saw. <laughs> he saw what it's his favorite thing to yeah, do. He saw what little Peter Porker <laughs> got up to in Far From Home. He's like, "That's it. I got to go talk to this kid for real this time, but not as Nick Fury. I'm going to show him as Agent P. Cleary. Cleary. That's how he has all that information." On Spider-Man. That's always like personal info, right? And now he's very interested in what's going on, you know, with the between the 10 rings and now this like Bengals thing. He's into what's going on because like MT was talking about, you know, these are possibly Kree that are coming in, people coming in from other dimensions. We know that's like Swords territory, right? This like kind of like otherworldly stuff. So I think he's snuck in, he's taken over the DODC, a government organization, so that he can be in charge. Without the government knowing that it's Nick Fury, he's pretending to be P. Cleary. That's my theory. Ooh. That's my theory. Brandon, Brandon, you know one thing. That's yeah. Do you, do you smell that? It's certified fresh, bitch. Oh. <laughs> it's certified oh. fresh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, wait, are you guys in the same building? <laughs> it tees up. Are you, it yeah. tees up. Brandon, get up for a second. Invasion. <laughs> Uh, get up for a second. Yeah, go I'm take a whiff. Uh, go take a whiff real quick. You smell that? Because that's a fr- <laughs> fresh deal. Over here. <laughs> that's a steal. That's my theory. Is that Pete okay. Cleary is really Nick Fury? In the thing about that theory, um, from board member number one, is that that is <laughs> rogue as hell. Right? Yeah. Check the box for being rogue as hell. <laughs> Pretty plausible with the timeline, and also very plausible with how Nick Fury acts. Except for right. the one thing I hate, but still plausible, 
he didn't stop that racist woman <laughs> at the DODC when she was like, like saying racist fuck? things. <laughs> but we don't talk. Next big question: um, How much does Nick Fury care about race? Because, <laughs> because I'm also like, it, it is a Nick Fury thing to be like, well, I see aliens every day. I see all these things, and it's like, yeah, but at the end of the day, you're still a black man in America, my dude. Get with it. Get with the program, Nick Fury. Um, but seriously, I like him. I like it. I like it. I like it. What could he be a scroll instead of Nick Fury? Well, I mean, that's that's a big theory, right? That mm. he clearly is a scrawl. But I, I think that's a, a fake out. And I think there is some changing going on, but it's Nick Fury. It's mm. not a scrawl. I, I can see this happening because we know that Secret Invasion is coming up. And that seems to be a very spy type of show between Nick Fury and the scroll race. And so, like, I can see Nick Fury wanting to take over the DODC in secret because, like, maybe the DODC has been taken over by the scrolls. And he's like, you know what? I'm infiltrating the infiltration and no one needs to like, I'm deep undercover because this is what I do. It's a secret invasion sandwich. People are secretly invading all over the place. It's completely for secret invasion. And also Nick Fury just learning, just being undercover at the DOC, but specifically more in cover, undercover and cover to figure out who Miss Marvel is because they're like, this woman kind of has similar tropes to Captain Marvel. And so it could be like, there's a girl running around town dressed as you, but with actual superpowers. And they'll, she'd be like, what? What are you talking about? And I'd be like, there's another you around here. So I think it'd be very important going into the Marvels and Secret Invasion for him to be undercover, learning so much about the new superheroes that are coming. Also, the Avengers have fallen apart, so they don't have a new team right now. So it's like, I need another, I need another well, team. Well, and it makes sense why they're looking for like enhanced uh, people, right? Especially like young kids. That way he's like, I'm tired of dealing with like adults that I got to like manage their, all their issues. I'm just going to get a group, group of kids together. <laughs> that I can, That's like, also, and it's easy to do. <laughs> you can pay kids less money, not only because yeah, they're exactly. children, but because yeah, yeah. they're so happy to be working with their heroes. And it's like, <laughs> free labor. <laughs> free labor. But no, I, I especially like this theory because like in the comics, and I, th- I believe in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. universe, if I'm not um, mistaken, there's this thing called uh, the life model decoys. Um, they're, ba- they're basically like human looking robots that like were just like, they, they very much look like humans and like you can mistake them for humans and they could trick people out. And I think that maybe Agent Cleary could be a Nick Fury life model decoy that like talks like Cleary, but like Agent, I mean, uh, Nick Fury is just talking through uh, oh, this like he's controlling it up like, on the right. ship <laughs> <laughs> like men in black he's like the he's like a little alien inside who's <laughs> like it's like it's Otto ryan's belt yeah yeah um i um this reminds me hold on let me let me check my notes real quick yeah that's rogue as hell brandon that's really rogue uh yeah that's <laughs> i could pull put a play out, of, play out of a justice playbook no i i of course yeah i never thought of that but it, that's really a fun theory because um you know, like you said, the, the, the Department of Damage Control is kind of like a mini shield. Like they already look, we already have the Stark drones now. And then shield reappropriates Stark tech real quick. Like in Winter Soldier, the helicarriers now had repulsors. And, um, and, and, and every time, you know, the, there's some, some new kind of tech they can take and, and use for themselves, they do. And so, so yeah, some of these weapons, some of the things they do is very shield like. And so, yeah, what, uh, going back on what MT was saying is like, I was thinking, well, if there was a way instead of, yeah, instead of Nick Fury maybe using the Black Widow mask, which could still work. Yeah, because he's maybe he's still in space and he's controlling a life model decoy of this guy so that he can have it, you know, he can um, he can do both things at the same time. I, I never thought of that. But, yeah, that's a really fun theory. The Stark drones is a good point because I think that's also why Nick Fury came down to take over because he saw that, like, what happens in Far From Home? He's like, oh, shit, the government's going to take everything that Stark owns. And I need to find out what happened with Edith and I need to figure all this out. You know, Talos wasn't getting the job done. And he's like, and Talos is not doing a good job as me. So I need to, yeah, yeah. I need to get out there and get some shit done. So yeah, I like that. And that's also why he told, he told Peter Parker, like, oh, Nick Fury's been in space for a year. Just because he wanted to see the look on Peter's face. And he knew immediately. You're right. He knew it right off the top of his head. Like very few people know Nick Fury's movements. And why would the damage control guy know that? Yeah, that's so (laughs) random. (laughs) exactly like that is very sketchy so like i definitely feel like there is some type of nick fury knowledge to like to, or some coordination to some degree because yeah i was thinking he might have been a scroll too because the scrolls would then know and tell each other like 
hey, P. Cleary scroll, like, you know, Nick Fury's up here. So that's why he'd know. But yeah, he's cool. Don't worry about it. He's cool. But um, but yeah, uh, yeah, some kind of like life model decor. Bringing back that Black Widow mask is good every time. So yeah. Yes. Oh, man. I, I need more of that technology in the MCU just randomly. Right. Like, uh, <laughs> and then somehow the mask can change frog your man. height and <laughs> frog man. Yeah. Exactly. No, frog man, frog, frog man is Nick Fury. <laughs> there, we tied it all together. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. 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 Double undercover. Yeah, he takes oh, off the frog man. mask and then the yeah, fake mask. The helmet and then the fake mask. And then he turns from a scroll into he turns into a scroll after. Yeah. <laughs> And she would just be like, no, <laughs> not my frog boy. Exactly. <laughs> not my not frog my man. Frog man. Yeah. But no, I like what you brought up, Tom, about um, how damage control is sort of the new shield. Because like it very much is. It's basically, it feels like shield with a different name. And like, they're slowly just, and like, I feel like Nick Fury, because of everything that happened in uh, Winter Soldier, he's probably like, you know what? This new organization that's, not shield, but basically is shield is really just gathering a lot of power and resources. And like, let's, I got to see what's going on here. So let me infiltrate as agent Cleary to see uh, what's what the whole, what the true um, purpose of the VODC is. Cause like, I think that Hydra could, cause like I'd be super sketched out with Hydra or like Hydra's rise after having the organization that I spent my entire life working in being like, all right, that was a lie. So like, I have to go check these guys out. So I can I can see that uh, Agent Cleary for sure um, working with Nick Fury or being Nick Fury, um, but yes. But let's do our final judgment on Brandon. Yeah, judge theory. this theory. theory. I dare you, fellow sharks. Starting with Jess, what is your vote for Brandon's theory, Shark Jess? Oh 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 oh! Oh yeah, give me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Nice. Beautiful. I'll take that. I like that vote because I myself will give you a thumbs up as well. All it's very right. rogue. I like it. Very rogue. And Tom, what, what Tom? you think, buddy? I wish I had more hands so I can give this theory <laughs> both thumbs down. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, I loved it. It was so rogue and so fun. I and it, it made me think about things I never thought of, especially like the shield connection. But Nick Fury and the mask. I think, uh, but who knows? Who knows? They could do anything. But I was like, that was just one. If you said life model decoy, I would have been like, okay, I can maybe buy that. But I don't. Yeah. I think Nick Fury's in space, you know, like eating, uh, drinking his pina coladas and enjoying things. So, small hands, <laughs> both thumbs down. <laughs> Brutal. Brutal. <laughs> but I still like you, Brandon. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> yes. Well, that's what I still I really like the theory, but it's no, I did so sure. I really like my it. pleasure. And I had a lot of good points for sure. Yeah. But now, uh, back by popular demand, <laughs> it is time for our rogue question. Yeah, popular baby. Demand demand Jessica one. complaining. Ooh, yeah, do it. <laughs> uh, a recent trailer for Thor Love and Thunder showed what appeared to be celestials looking in on a gathering of gods with Zeus. What is your wrongest reason why some Celestials would be at the Council of Godheads busting the party? I think they're not busting the party. I think these are two Celestials that Zeus, like, won over or, like, con- took control of or took as his own baby boys because we know how he likes to go around the universe uh, uh, banging women and taking their kids. Uh, I, think, I think these two Celestials, they're under Zeus's control and they're like the valets. Because they were like outside. I think they're like the valets. And when all these gods show up in different cars or whatever vehicles they use to get there, they t- they chuck the key to a celestial and they're like the celestial has to go park it. That's what I think they are. They're the valets. <laughs> I like that. I don't know if um, if you guys watch Adventure Time, but like it kind of reminds me of the gumball guardians of the uh, the Candy Kingdom. Or like <laughs> it's like they're just big gumball. Like and, like they're sort of like celestials. And anyway, uh, the youths will understand what I'm saying. <laughs> You're too young for me. <laughs> Sorry, me too. Me too. I'm with you, Brandon. I'm with you on that. <laughs> I just think Celestials deep down like to party. Also, I think... <laughs> so, not only do they like to party, I think it's like, you know, like, they kind of have to, you know? And I feel like the Celestials are like, if one of us has to go, like, one of us has to go to this party. And it's like, I don't want to go. And it's like, well, one of us has to go. So we're going to have to draw 
straws and see which one of us is going to show up. I think it's one of those parts where it's like, because they're so big that it's like, we still are like a community. We have to go join them for their stuff. But it's like, I don't want to go. So only two of them went because they're like, we don't all want to go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like the opposite of you, Jess, because I was I was like, the, oh, crap, the slushes are coming. Did you? I, I thought we weren't fighting you. I thought we weren't either. And now they show up like, hello. We're here. And I'm like, yeah, hello. Thanks for coming, guys. <laughs> Jeez. I'm not going to entertain them all kind night. Kind of a mess yeah, here. Like, more this place is kind of yeah. dirty. We ate all of your chips. We need more chips. Thank you for the guac. Yeah, they like take the whole bowl of snacks. Like, see, that's why we don't invite the celestials. God, these guys are weird. Hey, I think I might have broken your toilet. Exactly. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I planted We're a new celestial in your toilet. <laughs> and it's like, what? It's like, so so yeah, it's going to stay here for 80,000 years. Exactly. <laughs> It'll grow. And when it finally I'm... grows, it will blow up this mountain. Yeah, yeah. And it's like and you're piping. He's like, that planet has my baby. That planet has my baby. That one too has my oh, baby. Yeah. Oh, God, I wouldn't want to invite them because I'd be like, you, they're like dogs. You see them dating in the backyard, and you're like, hey, hey, stop! And they're like, get out of there! Get out of there. Put no they're babies in my baby. yard. Yeah, they're exactly. With their baby away from it. Exactly. So I, I would imagine that they're like, oh God, we we gotta Don't invite you them. Baby. But, yeah. The unwanted guests. Yeah, they're the unwanted guests. Like the neighbors and the god, you know, their godly neighborhood. They're like the neighbors be like, well, we can't not invite them. It's gonna be too obvious. So all right, just Yeah, they'll see it, they'll see everyone's here. They're gonna know something's going on. It's like we brought you other planets to work to our <laughs> casserole. And it's like, no, I don't want to eat these planets, just put them on the table. God. No, I like all of these rogue answers, but like I think the uninvited neighbors is my favorite <laughs> scenario there because like my God, it's just like oh man, here they are. It's like hey, you, you guys were meeting without us. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. We made you. It's like <laughs> it's like uh huh. Yeah, you made everybody. All right. I can see Taika with TT doing a really comedic take on the uh, the Celestials. Like I, I would love to see two just funny Celestials. Just like yeah, we're just hanging out, I guess, and like we don't really. We have no animosity. We're just doing our jobs, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to give you the rogue points. I don't think we really do rogue points anymore, <laughs> but I will give you the credits. I will vote my uh, <laughs> my host powers for you and your answer. Yeah. Tom. Um, Who so, knows? there you go. The winner of the rogue question <laughs> is Tom. But that is it for this episode of Rogue Theory. I want to thank our amazing, amazing guests, Jessica Clemens, Tom Michelson, and off producer Brandon for being on here today. I love you guys so much. You guys are so smart. And um, yeah, thank you guys. Uh, love spending time with you guys. Um, and you guys uh, watching can support our channel by checking out all of our awesome merch options over at NewRockstarsMerch.com. And if you got your own Rogue Theories, you can share them on our Discord. Um, if you're over 18, just search for the New Rockstars Discord server on Discord and join the conversation. You can follow me at Mastertainment on Twitter if you want to see me tweet some weird shit. You can follow New Rockstars on all our social platforms and be sure to hit that notification bell so you can get notifications every time we upload a video and subscribe to our YouTube channel here on YouTube in general. We'll see you guys next time. We love you and have a great day. Bye. 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 Ta-ta. Bye.